I am on fire this month. Linking my poor reading habit to my caffeine addiction was an incredible idea and I didn't actually think it was gonna work as well as it did. I'm gonna talk about that and a few other things I've noticed about my habit, the great reads I finished this month and what I'm currently reading going into April. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. If you do, welcome back to the March Reading Ramble, where I talk about what I've read, observations of my reading habit, and what I'm gonna read. Hopefully you can join me and let me know what you're reading or going to read or want to read in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's jump into things. So one big reflection is reading while I drink caffeine or something. I definitely drink too much caffeine. I don't drink coffee or anything. I'm definitely drinking a lot more tea now, especially energy drinks and stuff. I don't let myself drink it unless I'm reading, unless I'm actively reading and it's working quite well. If I open or start a new drink or whatever, I have to be reading and not past 4 p.m. and other restrictions apply. But I've read a lot in March and that linking of habits really works. So if you have a really strong keystone habit that you think you're gonna force yourself to do, either put reading next to it before or after, or tell yourself you can't do that thing until you read. Caffeine works because you can kind of do them both at the same time, but give it some thought, see what works for you. Now that I'm reading more at home as well, when I read on the subway, it feels a lot better because transportation to me, especially while I'm in New York, is, is often like, okay, I'm only doing this to get from point A to point B, no other reason. And so now that I'm reading, doing something that I would already be doing at home, it feels like, okay, cool. It's okay if I leave 15 minutes early because if I read on the subway, then well, maybe I would just be reading anyway. Anyway. And lastly, I've given myself a lot of choice with what to read from Japanese manga to thriller books to nonfiction stuff, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. We're gonna see a little bit of that as I get into the books today. And speaking of, let's jump into what I've read over March. So the structure of today's video, I'm gonna try something new. I wanna actually do this as a before and after I read situation, but I'm gonna quickly talk about what I expected from a book and what I actually got from it and some observations I made. Cause what I do is as I read, I just put down little notes as thoughts come up. The first book I finished was called Combat Martial Philosophy. I don't really know what I was expecting when I went into this. I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe this will be something where I can find incentive or motivation to do workouts that are martial arts oriented. Because as I haven't done it in the dojo for a while, the more I do it on my own, the more distant I feel from it. And I think by the end of it, martial combat philosophy is a great name for it because it's a bunch of ideas by this instructor. There are a few of them here and there that I'm like, eh. Some of them I'm like, hey, that's awesome. The idea of the four levels of competence, I'm a really big fan of, and I haven't heard that for a while. There are other things in that book that I kind of make you think. You should encourage students to spar together. Oftentimes it's like, oh my God, you're, you're gonna pit these 15 year olds against each other? Like, no, just in how like cushy a lot of today is. But getting that practice of, oh, something's coming at me, got a duck is good to have. I've read a lot of articles and tried reading some books on like similar genres, but they always come off as super macho. And while there's a little bit of that in this book, it wasn't nearly as macho. I wouldn't consider it macho, honestly, um, as other ones were. All in all, it's just kind of it's a bunch of ideas and things to keep in mind while you train. For example, the four levels of competence are something that go forever on multiple different disciplines. You start off not realizing you're terrible at something, which is unconscious incompetence, and then you start to be aware that you're terrible at it, which is conscious incompetence, and then you try to be better, and you really have to work hard to be better, so you're consciously competent, and then eventually you do that so much you become unconsciously competent, where you don't even realize it, but you're doing that better, whether it be drawing or better behavior. And then at some point, the cycle starts over again, and it does that for everything you do, or everything you learn. I just, I love that idea, I think about it a lot today, and it's something to keep in mind. Whoops. Another book I finished is The Savage God by A. Alvarez. It's a touchy topic, so I'm not gonna go too far into the subject of suicide or anything, but he, he knew Sylvia Plath, a famous poet. He talks about her a little bit, and then he, he dives into suicides present in ancient literature, I get not ancient literature, uh, classical literature. The only one I had read was Dante's Inferno. Uh, so he talks about suicide's presence in that and just how it evolved over time and took place in those pieces of literature. And then he kind of brings it back to his own life a little bit at the end. It was a really good read. And I definitely think, I think you should definitely read the whole thing if you are interested in the topic. I definitely would have gotten a lot more out of it if I was someone who is invested in literature uh, in an academic sense or more professional sense. When I went into it, I was just expecting some 
psychology stuff because I've gotten the psychology of mental illness a while ago and I'm still very curious about it. And so that's when I picked this book up. It was like two years ago and I finally read it and finished it. Totally wasn't what I was expecting. So yeah, it's super heavy. Uh, it does get a little existential at times. I think there are good messages. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. The next book is Kill Shot. Not going to spend too much time here, but it's the second book in... Uh, Vince Flynn's Mitch Rapp American Assassin series. As I mentioned in the last Reading Ramble, I'm gonna be reading one of these a month and I'm probably gonna start the third one today. Maybe I won't limit myself, but I found that when I got to like 50%, 60% through this book, I finished the rest of it in one sitting. It, it was, it became a literal page turner with all the twists and such that occurred. There's something that was done so right when you know the truth as a reader and the protagonist is in the right, but everyone thinks they're in the wrong. And so you want to reach that conclusion of like, okay, when does everyone realize that they're wrong? Like, when do I find out the protagonist was, you know, good all along? It was super well done and incredibly gripping. That was my, my one of my thrillers, one of my uh, fiction books for the month. And yeah, I think the balance of fiction and nonfiction is a really good balance to maintain. Speaking of, I did read that book on the Kindle. I, I got the Kindle version because I didn't want to go out and buy paperback. I, I want to get through all these books that I have up here this specific bunch. I've had them for ages, most of them, but I got a Kindle Paperwhite after I was using my old uh, seventh generation, sixth generation, seventh generation Kindle. And the Kindle is great. The first book I read and finished on the Kindle is the fourth book of the month, Beyond Caffeine. So as I've mentioned, I have a caffeine problem. I consider myself to constrain it well. I have a little bit in the morning when I wake up at 6.30, just to make sure I can get myself outside and do my workout and stuff. And then I make sure that I don't have any more till 12 and then none past 4 p.m. with a 30-ish minute buffer if I'm already drinking one, because I take a long time, I don't chug them. But anyway, I was curious about alternatives and what alternatives are out there. Beyond Caffeine is, it's not really a book, it's more of a collection of research articles. For example, it'll it'll rank, you know, green tea is five stars, FDA approved, blah, blah, blah. And then it has like research papers linked to it. And I've bookmarked quite a few of them. It also has something like cocaine, which is ranked as one star for, I hope, obvious reasons. But it was a cool overview to just kind of say, yeah, there is other stuff out there better and there is other stuff that's worse so stay away from these like some over-the-counter things you can get on amazon so easily such so aren't worth risking if you're curious about other herbs and substances out there that might be an alternative to the benefits of caffeine or an alternative as caffeine that gives similar benefits whether that be energy or just kind of general brain stimulation worth looking into i keep getting recommended this mushrooms book and i'm pretty sure it's because i read that one that's pretty much it for that and i will talk about the kindle a little more in a bit but as someone who's working to get rid of more of his stuff. I did a nice room clean out today. It feels great. The Kindle's great to get rid of all these books I'm carrying around with me and highlighting is so easy. Anyway, we'll get into that later. But uh, right before we jump into the last book, The Alchemist, I just want to mention I'm this far into the manga for My Hero Academia. I'm going to finish it. I'm not like fully reading and understanding it all, but I'm getting so much better at recognizing hiragana versus katakana and reading them, you know, seeing the sound for na and not thinking, okay, na and then nah, but just seeing it and thinking nah, like pronouncing nah. Thinking of it as that one sound versus N plus A in English. And I'm recognizing kanji still. My wani kanji has been slow, but yeah, J Japanese is a whole other topic. So the last book is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Hopefully I pronounced that somewhat right. Uh, he's a Brazilian author. The book is very famous and I see why. I was in Seattle in a secondhand bookstore and I noticed this and it talked about finding one's purpose, personal legend. And I've been thinking a lot about my own purpose, my own meaning lately. And so I was like, you know what? Last minute, I'm gonna get this. It did kind of sound familiar. And later I talked with my mom and she confirmed it was one of her favorite reads. Yeah, I've probably seen it around before. I, I really love the book. Going into it, I kind of just expected a little, a little journey, some life advice along the way. But what you get out of it is something that has a bunch of like really good quotable moments in it and just lessons that you get through fiction. And that's one of those things that's the power of fiction. Even the foreword had some things that were like, whoa, that hits hard. You know, you come in and you see the sheep uh, for the shepherd are a clear analogy. You get to the end and it's a little abrupt, the ending, but you kind of get the point. And for me, my big takeaway with as few spoilers as possible is that progress and experience is not ever a net zero game. For example, in my life, I'm currently doing something. I need to stay vague. If you know me, you'll probably be able to guess this pretty quickly. I feel like 
once I'm done with it, I'm not gonna have gained anything. It's going to be some net zero change in my knowledge and my skill. But in reality, I have found something I don't wanna do that doesn't really suit me. There are aspects of it that I have learned from, you know, what makes good aspect of thing good. <laughs> and what I don't like, what I don't wanna do. And as I find in, in this free time I have what I'm drawn to, then it's like, okay, you know, maybe I wanna do more of that. It's like an anime in Erased. At the end, you get this, this notion that this time that you spend doing something, it doesn't become lost time if there's no explicit benefit. It can sort of become treasure time but you can only treasure it when you find that end result. You can get to the end of your journey and end up beaten down and you can think all that time is wasted, but then all of a sudden something good happens out of it and you start to treasure it. Three day backpacking trip with um, from my summer camp. In the moment, a horrible time. Man, we were so tired at the end, but we I'm pretty sure the whole group of us looks back on it and thinks that was awesome. That was a really treasurable weekend <laughs> with the boys. Also, I recorded a VGT on this that will be out the same day as this learning log, the Saturday. So feel free to check that out if you're curious, but I talk about this this proverb that I often think about and how it's totally changed because of this book. So yeah, that's five books in the month of March. It's pretty awesome. All five of them were started in March. Also, I read more of Nerds Per Minute by Sean Rona and I've bookmarked some things in the front. Back In the back, I literally have sticky notes. I have a video coming out in either the next or the next two videos called The Myth of the Homer Method, inspired by this book. The, the start of it kind of got me thinking alongside other comments Rona has made outside of the book. I really do want to finish it this month. I think reading it in one time period is definitely helpful. I'm looking forward to reading more of it. And if I don't finish it this month, that's okay, but I will likely make a lot of headway. I dropped a book. The next book, uh, I did start it this month. It's called The Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. It's relatively short, once again on the Kindle. It's a philosophy book, and therefore uh, I have to just kind of sit with things sometimes. I'm 28% of the way through. If I finish this, I will move on to letters of a, Seneca's Letters from a Stoic, but for now, one philosophy book is enough. Purpose of life, whew. It gets you. Another book that I will probably finish in the next week is Grokking Algorithms. If you're interested in data structure and algorithms, or you've taken a course in the past and like me, had a miserable time in that course, you had a great professor, I just wasn't adamant about the material at the time, I would highly recommend this book. So far, it's been great. There are really cool diagrams, things that are explained in a very brief way. I might understand it easily because I've got a certain understanding of these data structures and these algorithms, but I still think it's a very clear reading. It doesn't go into the math and the proofs of all of them. Sure, the pseudocode isn't super in depth, but it is enough to conceptualize things and you get a flavor of looking at a coding question and thinking, oh, you know, the setup of this question would be great for graphs and a breadth first search. Or this one, oh, you know, greedy algorithm. That sounds like a greedy algorithm problem. Those are the books I started this month and will intend to finish in April, if not make a lot of headway through. I also want to give an honorable mention to my friend who's writing a book. I don't want to like say anything, but I'm just like reading it to give feedback. And it's a nice nonfiction read and it's been really engaging. For, at first, I was really slow at reading it because I would get the Google Doc and I'd read it on my laptop, but then I exported it to PDF, converted it to a Mobi, put it on my Kindle, and it's really cool reading it as like an actual book. Uh, reading a friend's work as an actual book. It, I don't know how to explain it. It's just, it's cool. And so I've been reading that and spending a significant portion of my reading. Not like a significant portion, but when I read it, I read it as if, okay, hmm, do I want to read Myth of Sisyphus right now or am I feeling the nonfiction realm? Nerds Per Minute and the Grokking Algorithms are kind of a special case. So I'm gonna leave those in the ether for now. So Myth of Sisyphus is one book for April. We got Transfer of Power, which is the third Mitch Rat book. Two more, uh, one of which is the Roads to Sada, 2,000 mile walk through Japan. All I know is that a guy walked from the bottom to the top of Japan, which is kind of insane. And I wanna to travel to Japan and I think this will do a helpful job of kind of reminding me to connect with Japanese language and to go beyond the language and also connect with its culture. And Aristotle's Poetics. Uh, we read some excerpts for this for a class on performance that I took my second to last term of college. And I got it and I never ended up reading it. It's, it's, it's pretty short. A study of the art of drama, so. And lastly, I just wanted to quickly touch upon the Kindle stuff. Where'd I put that? Carrying around the Kindle is so much easier. It, it does kind of have that problem of uh, too much choice because I take it, I flip it open, and then all of a sudden I met with, hmm, do I want to read Myth of Sisyphus? Do I want to read Bloody Carla? Do I want to try reading the first ReZero visual novel in Japanese? Ooh, but I also have Grokking the Algorithm. So you kind of got to work with that in a way, but it's so much better to look at a bunch of digital versions of the files versus a stack of books and you're like, ooh, which one do I pick off the 
pile. So I want to work through these physical books and I have a bunch on my Amazon wish list and I'm very optimistic about reading more. It's, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of that's kind of it. It's, it's nice that I have some books to kind of hold on to and I can highlight them on here and forever keep them on here. I just hope I never lose it. <laughs> anyway, that will do it for this reading ramble. We're coming up at the end of the recording, so perfect timing. Make sure to let me know what you're reading. I would love to hear it. If you're interested in any of these reads and you want to go pick one up, I'll leave some Amazon links in the description down below. And if you do start reading one, let me know so I can kind of prioritize it. You know, if I'm between two books, but I've realized someone else is reading The Myth of Sisyphus, I'll try to read that so that I can try and connect more with people on these videos. And I'll also, during the next reading ramble, prepare little, little visuals of what I expect and what I got from it. Maybe except for the fiction stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Make sure to check out some past reading or productivity videos here if you're curious and uh, I'll see you next week. Have a good one and as always don't forget to stay awesome.